Hi there, listeners. Danny Crouch here, the listening coach from chooseyourchapter.com.au. Uh, today's a special day. You all get to listen to my mother. So today is all about learning to listen to your mum. So I want to welcome to you Adrian Bajent Crouch. I think that's the way we get it around this way, that order, or is it Adrian Crouch Bajent? It's one or the other. We'll find out very shortly. Hi, mum. How are you? Good. How are you? Awesome. Awesome. Um, obviously, I've been listening to you for quite some time. You might think that I don't listen a fair bit of the time, but um, just wanted to ask you a few questions on uh, what you've learnt as a mother and how we as kids grew up listening to you. And then, obviously, if you can reflect on listening to your parents, listening to your students, and, and so on and so forth. So, I suppose the first question I might ask is um, how important is listening to you, and what do you think is a really important skill? When it comes to listening to someone, well, I think I think listening to someone is a more important skill than talking, because then you're getting to know how the other person thinks. When they talk, you listen to them, and you're capturing more information than perhaps if you do all the talking yourself. So I guess I've been a great one for listening to people, even though I do talk a lot as well. Uh, we all have our fair share, I suppose. So yeah. why do you think it's important as a mother, why do you think it's important that kids should listen to their parents? I suppose because the older, the mother's, the mother's obviously older, so they've had more experience. So they've probably experienced everything that that child's been through. Although today I don't know about that. But I think, you know, when... when my children were young, when you were three were young, we'd experienced pretty well everything that you'd been through. So it's just someone who's wiser and who's been through all those experiences that knows how to advise you on the best things and the best approaches, I suppose, the best angle to take with mm. things. Mm. Um, so I guess that's, that's really the key, isn't it? Mm. The, the experience that we've had. Mm. But then, but then the, the children are entitled to an opinion, and I think that's where the listening comes in as a mother too. You've got to listen to what your kids say and and, and think about it from their angle as well. But nine times out of ten, the kids are always wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe you just didn't hear. I didn't hear. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. You weren't <laughs> only, listening to me. I'm only joking. I know. I'm only joking. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting point you raise because um, what I tend to find is we, as humans, just human nature, is that uh, quite often we feel that whatever we're going through has never happened to anyone else before. It's interesting that yeah. you say that. that, that Absolutely. Um, yeah, we go in cycles. So it's all about, yeah. I suppose, from, a, from the other context, uh, rather than listening, it's also all about, being able to talk and express yourself and just having that person there to listen to you. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and if you don't, I mean, if you don't listen, you're just being a dictator, really. Mm. It's no different to being being totally overruling everything that the, the offspring say. That, that doesn't work. And no relationship works with one person listening and the other one talking all the time. It's got to work both ways. Mm. Mm. You know, it's got to balance out. Because mm. so, everybody's got something worthwhile to say, no matter what age they are. Mm. And, and I think too, as a parent, you tend to forget some of the things that you, or the feelings you had when you were younger. Even though you, you experienced the same things, you, 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 your approach was different or, or you don't remember it exactly. Mm. So that doesn't hurt to be reminded. Mm. Mm. So even if times change, the feelings and emotions stay the same, don't they? More or less, more or less. I don't know about today, though. I think it's a totally different ball game today. There's too much anger out there, so I think a lot of people aren't listening because they're angry. Okay. I think that anger can can block hearing what the other person's saying. Right. So, yeah, and I think we were very strict about that into the ha in our house, not to have any anger when your kids were being brought up with to, to listen to you rather than get angry and not listen to you mm. or to allow you to get angry and not listen to us. Mm. Yeah, I don't think you can yeah. think logically when you're angry. I think you, your emotions over 
over dominate mm. the sense of logic. Mm. Yeah, wow. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So obviously the the fact that I'm driven towards the topic of learning to listen sort of suggests that I'm rather auditory. Um, and it's interesting, I'm yeah. guessing from your perspective, um, and those that don't know, my mum's an artist. Would that suggest that you're more visual than auditory or is art yeah. more of a feeling or do you identify in a certain way? And if you are more of a visual learner, how does that, contrast if I'm more of an auditory learner or a listening learner how does that contrast as a mother-son relationship okay okay that's I'm not sure which to add the first but I guess the yeah. first thing I think of is the fact that I am a visual person means that if I want to see how something if I want to know how something's done I have to be actually shown how to do it so I have to actually see it with my eyes oh that's how you do it okay I can do it now Whereas if someone told me over the phone how to do something, I probably wouldn't be able to grasp it quite so easily. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm not talking about you. But I, <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you're so, saying. Yeah, so whereas somebody who's verbal probably would understand by hearing a description. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas, yes, I mean, I can, I can hear a description while I'm like reading a book. I can read a paragraph in a book and I can picture it really clearly as though it was in front of me. I don't know if everybody does that, I don't know, but I, I, that's how I read a book. Mm. I see it in images. Mm. So if I'm talking to someone like you or, or the others, your brother and sister, I have immediately visualise those things that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So if you're talking to me and I'm listening, I'm visualising as I listen. Mm. Yeah, of course. Um, I think that's probably got a lot to do with why you get along so well with Nick. Nick's very visual as well. Um, yes, yes. And yes, sure an interesting thing, and this might have a bit to do with our relationship growing up, is when Nick and I, we've identified this through our learning modalities, that because I'm a listener and Nick is a reader slash writer, when we have an argument, Nick wants me to send her a text message or write her an email where I want her to tell me what's, yes. what's the problem. Uh, or yeah. why she's upset with me. So the communication breakdown there is just the two of us not listening to each yeah. other's needs and, and not understanding that, yes. what we want to listen to. Um, yeah, that's not, yes, that's not just uh, that Nick's visual and your audio, it's also yeah. because you're male and she's female. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. You know, that's the fact. Yeah. Men, men don't want letters written to, don't want to sit down and write a letter about things, but women do. It's something that I don't know why we do it, but most women I know prefer to write things mm. down. It's interesting you say that, Mum, because you've, you've basically, in my hearing, I might be wrong, I'm happy to be wrong, I make mistakes all the time. Um, I heard you say that all men, I don't know if it is all men. Um, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say all. No, no, I, I'm generalising, that's yeah. very broad. Yeah. But, but most men, I think, don't sit yeah. and write things down. Hmm. I'm guessing most auditory men don't, but I'm, I'm also guessing that there must be females out there that are very auditory and they want to talk about their feelings and emotions and, and say what yes. they mean and hear yes. their man talk to them, or woman, yes. whatever they're inclined. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. The, the, the first thing that springs to my mind, and, and this is because it's topical and very topical at the moment, is the, the a Mayan, or whatever, Mayan, the fellow in the Bali Nine that's about to face execution, who took up painting, I know this is right off what you're talking about, but it's not. Mm. He's a purely visual person. Mm. So how is he coping with the emotional distress he's going through? Mm. Is to be visual about himself and he's painting himself. That's how he's being getting through that stuff. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. how he's coping with it. And I think that's a perfect example of someone who he can't write things down in a letter so yeah. much. Uh, it's a fascinating. I'm really listening to what you're saying here, and it opens up my world to people. Obviously, journal, and this guy does it through painting. And I wonder yeah, if that relates to yeah. people that talk to themselves. It probably does. That, and what about people that hear voices? You know, maybe yeah. that's what they're doing. Yeah. You know, maybe they're hearing. They're hearing because they—that's how they're coping with with things, or not coping, whatever the case may be. Hmm. Yeah, fascinating. fascinating. I, don't, I, I don't think that people are ready to, a lot of people aren't ready to listen. Mm. They don't listen to themselves. They don't mm. like sitting quietly and listening to themselves. Mm. 
you know. Go on. That's sort of what going for a walk is about, isn't it? If you go for a walk like I do every morning, I listen to myself, I listen to my thoughts. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Um, interesting you say that. What I call these the Learn to Listen series, and I purposely yes. use the number two rather than uh, TO. And people quite often pull me up, and I've even submitted some articles to a, a um, coaching magazine or newsletter or whatever it is, and they've suggested that we should remove the two and put the letters in there without actually listening to what the article's about or me explaining it to them. What I basically say is, well, learning to listen isn't just learning to listen to two people. It's first of all learning to listen to yourself. So it's the first person you want to listen to is you and then start to listen to those around you. So the, the, the number two is synonymous to the whole article. Absolutely. I think it's absolutely imperative. Hmm. I think that's very – it's interesting that you, Sasha, and I always – well, not always, but we have this thing with numbers included in words. Hmm that um, Sasha's business was Active 8 with the number 8. Yeah, right. Yours is 2 with the number 2, and I've just, um, my brooch line and, and miniature line, I call Titivate with the number 8. Okay. Now, isn't that interesting? I wonder if Tim's done the same, but the three of us have used a number mm. in place of a, of a <laughs> few letters. We've got a uh, we've got a numerology coach for one of a better word in our circle of friends, TJ. Uh, ah. She's fascinated to hear this, and I'm and I have to encourage her to listen to it. She probably won't yes. recognise that I'll give her a bit of a plug, but um, really cool. Um, yeah, cool. So where was I going to go with that? Um, <laughs> I'd say stick to the two because it's also yeah. it's what catches somebody's eye. Yeah. I mean, if it's about listening, you're hearing the word two anyway, yeah. so it doesn't matter how it's spelled. Yeah, exactly. But when you're visualising, it's it's another catch when you see the number two. Hmm. Hmm. So the guy, the people here, they're just look. If they're looking at the screen, they're seeing uh, just a general picture that I put up. I'm actually going to take them over to your website. Um, so this is just a WordPress blog, obviously that we've set up for you. It's easy for you to access. But this is about your art. So mm -hmm. uh, how do I say this question? Um, what do you listen to when you're painting? Uh, very important. I listen to music mostly classical, but only instrumental. I can't listen to vocals when I'm painting. Mm. I can when I'm sculpting. I can listen to, to vocal music with voices, but I can't when I'm painting. Now, painting, it has to be purely instrumental uh, and usually classical. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What do you think the reason is behind that? Um, it, it clears my mind. I'm able to listen without getting involved in the music. If, if it's vocal, I tend to sing along, and then that distracts me from what I'm focusing on. Wow. So I need, when I paint, I need to be 100% focused on what I'm doing. I can't yeah. stand for distractions of any kind. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think your art students need, want, uh, are capable of listening to when you're in a, or were in a classroom, and I'm not too sure how much painting you're doing, or painting teaching you're doing this, these days. Right, right, yeah. Um, you mean what sort of music, or, or generally what did they hear from me? With, with, both, me? both, I, I don't know, I haven't been in the oh, classroom okay. with you for a long time. What, would they, oh, okay. Your yeah, advice? Well, the, mu the music, I do play specific music for them, again it's not vocal. Mm -hmm. um, it's instrumental music, but and and I try to keep the room fairly quiet, and I only talk at certain times. If I feel, I'll talk at the beginning of the class, probably for about fifteen minutes or so, and then I let them paint quietly, and I can encourage them to be quiet. I don't like them to have conversations about what they did on the weekend or any of that mm -hmm. sort of thing because it's not the place or the time. Mm. And it's very distracting. So I, I try to get them to learn how to focus without interruption. Okay. And then I might, after about half an hour, bring, say something and get them all to stop and listen or keep painting and listen. But I encourage them to listen as a group rather than individually. Mm. Mm. Because I think that I might say something to one person. I might, I might be directing it at one person or, or that person's work 
is, is, has encouraged me to say a specific thing like uh, the difference between warm and cool and how cool colours recede and warm colours come forward. Well, that's an illusionary thing. But I might be saying that to one person, but I know that so-and-so over the other side of the room needs to hear it at the same time. So that's mm. why I encourage everybody to listen. Mm. So, and then at, at the end of the class too, we have a, a critique for a good 20 minutes where mm. we talk about each person's paintings. Mm. And everybody listens to that. Mm, okay. And one more question, final question, and I'm not 100% yeah. sure where this is going to go because I... Where, where we go is we try and only focus on what we want or what we want to do. And I'm not sure if this question yeah. will come in the right way, but I'll give it a go. What mm. do you think people should not listen to? Mm. There's, there's only one thing that comes straight to mind, and that's anything negative. Cool. Now, that's interesting you should ask that, because on, on the way here in the car, um, the Prime Minister came on and he said something about we're going into a dark age with terrorism. And I thought, now that's the sort of thing we shouldn't listen to because that's negative. It would have been better had he said we should encourage us getting back into a lighter time rather than anything mm. else. Rather than use it, it's like saying, oh, the world's going downhill. Wouldn't it be better to say we should encourage the world to go uphill again mm. without even mentioning the negative? Mm. And I, I think that's, yeah, negative is really destructive. It's a bit like before and I was saying people get angry and they don't listen. I think if you're in a negative mood, you don't hear anything that somebody's saying. Yes. Your ears are blocked if you're negative. <laughs> yeah, interesting you say that. We, I, I listen to a lot of uh, mentors like uh, Sharon Pearson and, and Tony Robbins. And Tony, Tony Robbins, Robbins, yes. Um, he's, he calls it the pain and the pleasure model. And yeah. it's fascinating how, especially in sales and marketing, how, how people and businesses feel that the best way to make sales is through creating pain. And that's obviously yeah. what the Prime Minister did there. He was creating pain by suggesting yeah. dark ages rather than focusing on light yeah. ages. Because why would people oh, buy something that's light? Um, no, that's true. As human beings, we tend to veer further away from pain, even if it costs us moving towards pleasure. Um, does that make sense? Um, yeah, so, for example, a common one uh, is smoking. People just yeah. believe it's too painful to give up smoking. And the pleasure of living another 20 years because you don't have lung cancer, people will avoid that because of the pain they have for smoking. Um, yeah. Until you change your mindset around to, well, it's too bloody painful to smoke, um, you won't get over it because you're going to focus on moving away from the pain and you think it's painful not to smoke because of the withdrawals and the whatever other reason you want to come up with, but uh, I'm not going to get go down that path, preaching about smoking. Mm. No, 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 <laughs> no, no I know what you're saying. No, I understand. Yeah, that makes sense. It's the same as everything else, yeah. Yeah, cool. But I think that's the key, it's not to listen. And I don't like listening to people prattle on. I got caught last night with a woman who prattled on about something I wasn't the slightest bit interested in. Mm. And, I, and she prattled on for a good 20 minutes ear bashing me and I thought, why am I sitting here listening to this? Because <laughs> I was being polite. How stupid. <laughs> yeah, with the same like that, I, um, there's, a, there's a website called meetup.com. Basically, anyone in the world, really, if you're um, looking for a group to join, whether it's knitting, boxing, walking on the beach, whatever it is, you just go on there and say within five kilometres or however far you want to travel, uh, and I'm interested in knitting or boxing or whatever it is, if there's a group doing it, they tell you when and where and you just turn up and you meet these people. Anyway, I started, uh, back to what you're saying here, I started turning up to these things and you get stuck in the corner with these people that all they want to do is talk about themselves. Yeah, so I yeah. thought, you know what, I'm going to start my own group. And I called it the 60-40 group. All right? yeah, so yeah. the only rule is you have to ask 60% of the time questions so you're not talking about yourself. If, if you're not asking 60% of the questions, then you're talking about yourself and you're not welcome in the yeah. group. <laughs> yeah. That, that's really good. That's really good. I like that. Uh, what a people, good idea. People, people like the concept uh, and they turn up and more often than not, because I'm a listening coach, they end up talking about themselves anyway, but I enjoy it. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's why I go there that's to wonderful. listen and I get an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, 
All right. Well, yeah. That, thanks for that. I've got your web page up here at the moment with your email address at the bottom. So, um, if they want to email you about any of your artwork, they can have a look on your website, adriancrouch.wordpress.com. So, is it A D R I E double N E C R O U C H dot wordpress.com? Um, you've got a few art pieces on there, whether it's um, trinkets and miniatures and paintings and all sorts of stuff, don't you? Yep. Sure yep. do. Yep. Cool. Yep. Hey, there sure for. Do generally for sale or uh, exhibitions somewhere or through sort of mid yep. north coast of New South Wales and all over the shop. But, um, yep, Melbourne, yep. Oh, well, wow. okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, well, thanks, Mum. Thanks for uh, spending right. 15 That's minutes okay. or so with us and I'm sure there's a few people out there need to learn to listen from you as much as I do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's good. That's really good. Cool. I hope it was valuable. Yep. Awesome. All right, I'll say bye for now. And uh, I'm Danny Crouch, the listening coach from chooseyourchapter.com.au. If you're looking for us, you can find us on the MyQuest Facebook page or on our website. Um, see you next time. Cheerio. <laughs>